This video is sponsored by Cabela's. I buy fishing gear at Cabela's and you can find the full list of the gear that I use in the description. Well, welcome back to another fishing adventure. I'm using spicy tiger nuts for my hook bait today. They've just been soaking in sriracha sauce. And I'm fishing on a piece of land that should be underwater. It was underwater last time I was here. About a month ago was the last time I was here. Water levels everywhere have just been falling and falling and falling. We don't get any rain. I'm putting two tiger nuts just like that on each hair rig. That's what I like to do with my hook baits. I like my hook baits to be uh, at least just a little bit larger than uh, if there's any chunky stuff in the pack bait. You know, if there's corn or something, little kernels of corn, I like the hook bait to be a little bit larger than that, just to kind of stand out a little bit. And I don't really know why, no real reason why, but I'm going with the spicy theme. Today I got spicy hook baits, and this is spicy pack bait, as you can see from the reddish color. Uh, it's got chili powder in it. That's old fashioned oats. Uh, sweet feed pellets, a can of corn, and a can of creamed corn, and chili powder. In my own experience, I, I tend to get less um, catfish with spicy baits, but I'm still testing that theory. Uh, it's definitely not 100% or anything, but I don't know. If you're having, uh, catching more catfish than carp and, and you don't want that, uh, maybe give spicy baits a try. It is October 1st. And uh, I'm in Iowa, and we are in the middle of a heat wave. Uh, 90 degree temps last couple days. 93, I think, is the forecasted high for today. And one more day of this hot stuff. It's weird weather. About three, four feet of water right there where I put this bait. And that's the reason why I'm here in this spot because there's shallow water here that I can fish. That's what I want, shallow water. With this uh, warm up the last couple days, the, the shallows have warmed back up again. Fish were kind of moving into a, a fall pattern of uh, cooler evenings, uh, cooler air temperature, pushing them into deeper water. But that's all. It's all changed here in the last few days. And I didn't even bother fishing the, the first couple days of the heat wave because just drastic uh, changes in temperature just generally are, are bad for fishing, at least in my experience. Oh, it's a lot deeper right there. Huh. I didn't really want it that deep, but I'll leave it there. I'll have one in the deep just as my uh, control subject here. I'll see if I get bites in shallows or deeps. Maybe I'll get no bites today, huh? I guess if you're watching this, then I must have got at least a bite or two or maybe something interesting happened, huh? The secondary reason why I'm here at this place is mirror carp. I've caught four mirror carp out of the hundreds and hundreds of carp that I've caught. I've caught four mirror carp in my life. Two of them have come from this lake. So I think there's a higher than average percentage of mirror carp in this lake. That's just based on my own personal experience. But I'm just gonna fish for a few hours before it gets too hot. The wind is supposed to start picking up here anytime now too. I'm kind of hiding behind a cut bank, so uh, that'll give me a little extra time before that 30 mile an hour wind starts taking over the day. We'll see how it pans out. Thanks for tuning in. Now that baits are out, I've got a little bit of work to do here. I walked through some stickers on the way down to the water here, so uh, yeah, fall. Nice. There we go. Yeah. Now that I mentioned the spicy bait keeps away catfish, I'll probably catch a bunch of catfish now this morning, I suppose. Yep. 
You know what? I think I'm going to keep fish today. Yeah, the water at this lake is uh, pretty clean. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I have had times at this lake where I get into a mess of catfish. I'll catch a half dozen catfish or something. And kind of wishing I would have started keeping them at the beginning. So I'll put this guy in the stringer just through the lip. That way it's not going to hurt his gills. And uh, for whatever reason I changed my mind, I can let him go at the end of the session here. That is not looking good for my for my theory about the spicy baits and the catfish. Oh well. Not a dink catfish, but it may be a catfish. Might be a carp. It's been about an hour. <clears throat> this was that rod that I first casted it and went in kind of a deeper area, probably seven or eight feet deep, and I left it there for about half an hour. And then I reeled it in, rebaited, and moved it closer to the bank. I uh, ended up putting it in probably three feet of water. That's where this fish came from. I think it's a carp. Really shallow here. Just real, real slow decline out. Ten feet out there where my net is. It's only uh, eight inches of water right there. Pretty sure this is a carp. That catfish would have given up a while ago. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yep, just saw him. Come on in here. Got him, got him. Now he's gonna freak. He managed to get himself off the hook in the net. That's nice. Yeah, good start to the morning. Average size carp for this lake. Six, six, seven pounds maybe. I'm not going to weigh them. Not a mirror, that's for sure. But like I said, it's been about an hour. One little catfish, this little carp. Back in the water he goes. Wind hasn't picked up yet, so... Maybe when the wind picks up, the fish bite will pick up too. I don't know. Sometimes that happens. Back in the water. So long. I know it's shallow there. There you go. See ya. See that bee there on my reel? I was reading an article yesterday about bees and how most people just know of the idea that uh, bees are in danger these days. I'm sure you've probably heard that. But uh, it's not just it's not honeybees. Honeybees are not in danger at all. There's more than enough honeybees. There's all sorts of other bees that are in danger, endangered uh, from going extinct. So uh, there's lots of people that are uh, taking up beekeeping, thinking they're they're helping the the ecosystem, but uh, actually it's 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 not. So how neat is that? That's pretty neat. This is the one I just cast it out. Another eater cat. Okay. <clears throat> That's two. I can get one more. That's enough for a catfish dinner for my family of three. Uh, let's see. It's 
It's always the first thing I do when I pick up on a fish. <laughs> Check that drag. Make sure it's not too tight. I think this is a carp. Same spot where that other carp came from. Just right over there by those rocks. Not going to do a catch and cook on the carp today. Maybe the catfish. We'll see. I really want a mirror. It's really trying to swim across my other lines. That's a pretty nice fish. Ah, oh, bees in my face. I don't know why there's so many bees around here today. No. That fish got away. Right at the bank. Okay. It wasn't a giant and it definitely wasn't a mirror. Kind of almost carbon copy of that first fish. So bait up and try again. I don't really spend any time these days analyzing why a fish uh, gets lost. This is proven, tested rig. It's not the rig. There's nothing I need to change with the rig. Sometimes you just lose fish. They don't get hooked up good or the, the it tears out or it, it just happens. It's that's a part of fishing. I don't really think once you once you find a rig and a hook and just a setup that just works reliably, there's no point in analyzing it anymore. It's just part of it's just a part of fishing. The one thing I do check every single time though is the sharpness of the hook because that will uh, that'll make a difference. And this is good and sharp. Okay, this rod is on fire today. Almost every fish coming on this rod down there. Definitely a carp. Ooh, there he goes. It's kind of difficult landing them in this water so shallow. It doesn't leave much room to get the net underneath them. Plus they can see me real good. Come on. Get in here. Gotcha. Yeah, second car for the morning. It's a little bit smaller. Oh, my other rod's going off. Get out of here. All right. Middle rod. Might be my catfish dinner. This is my catfish dinner. Oh yeah. Get in here. Honey, we're having catfish for dinner tonight. Let's see if I can get this hook out. Without damaging it, I frequently bend out the hooks, trying to remove them from catfish because their mouths are so tough. I think that worked out okay. Yeah, that's another good eater-sized catfish. And three is just enough for a dinner, but I will take uh, another one or two if they're, if they're gonna become available. Limit's eight, and I'm not gonna keep that many fish. It's about 9.30 in the morning, and uh, it is starting to get hot, both uh, temperature-wise and bite-wise, so. I'll just tough it out as uh, as long as I can stand it, I guess. Definitely not going to stay here past noon, but uh, we'll give it a little more time to see what transpires. Okay, got a drag puller on this rod. First fish on this rod for today. Nice. Oh, my umbrella's about to blow away. The wind's starting to pick up. I think this might be catfish, more catfish dinner here. Yep. Don't need the net for this guy. Nice. Dinner for four. Somebody gets to have seconds tonight. 
or leftovers even. Yeah, this is probably the nicest uh, fish so far. Oldest fish. The other ones I think I still have spots on them. This is a nice, uh, I don't know, two pound fish. Perfect size. These are stocker fish. Stocked in here. On the stringer. I'm glad that I uh, decided to keep the fish right away. Got four nice ones on there. Well, it looks like I was wrong about that spicy bait theory. That's fishing for you. Got four nice pan-sized catfish. I'm gonna take you back to my kitchen now, show you how I like to cook these up. Stay tuned. Well, welcome to my kitchen. I'm gonna show you how this uh, catfish dinner is gonna go. And like any good catfish dinner, it starts with a potato. And into this pan, I'm gonna put uh, a few tablespoons of butter. I like to use real butter for this kind of stuff. Normally, I don't add anything to my potatoes, but uh, I've got an abundance of peppers in the garden right now, so I'm going to put some peppers and also a little bit of red onion. And there's the diced potatoes. I like to cut them pretty small so they cook quickly. Let that come to a sizzle. And here are the four catfish. Little ones, I just, uh, as you can see, I removed the head and the fins and uh, the skin and left the, meat, left the meat on the bone. And uh, in my opinion, this is the best way to cook, cook small catfish of this size. My favorite breading for catfish consists of three ingredients. The first one is just regular all-purpose flour. This is about a cup here. And that goes into a plastic bag. And about the same amount of cornmeal. This is not corn flour, it's corn meal. It has a, a bigger grain than corn flour. Uh, that gives it a good crunch and good flavor. Do about the same uh, amount of corn meal, about a one to one ratio of corn meal to flour. I don't really measure. That looks good. And uh, the third ingredient is Cajun seasoning. That's my favorite seasoning on catfish. Just salt and pepper is, is good too. A lot of seasoning in there because that's going to be the only seasoning that's going to be on the outside of the fish. Give that a quick toss just to get those dry ingredients mixed up. And then in goes the fish. Bag gets closed and away we go. There we go. That just gives me a very, very light uh, coating on the fish. That's the way I like it. Um, just a very light coating and that'll brown up nicely. Lots of good flavor. Very light coating. Got about a half inch of canola oil in here that's uh, been heating up and now it's shimmering. I'll go ahead and put these in. Yeah, I know fried fish is uh, not anything unique. Everybody does fried fish, but we don't we don't eat uh, locally uh, harvested fish like this very often. Maybe half a dozen times a year, and we don't eat fried food very often either. So uh, I don't know. When we eat locally sourced fish like this, we like to fry it pretty good. And these catfish on the bone take longer than uh, fillets do. I don't really ever time it, but I, I'm guessing it's. I don't know, seven to ten minutes per side. I like to make sure it gets thoroughly cooked all the way through and keep the oil, I keep the oil a little bit, not quite as hot as uh, with the filet. I don't want the outside to burn before the uh, middle gets cooked through. That's looking pretty good on that first side there. Potatoes are looking pretty nice. I like to just put some uh, general purpose season salt on the potatoes. That's my favorite.
make sure he was fine. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.